guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to yet another episode of Restoring a JDM Classic. Um, so let me walk you through what we've done with what we've done so far. Um, we brought the we brought the RX7 to the house, um, you know, all the way from Alvarado, Texas. Put it here, pressure washed it, so on and so forth. Um, that part, of course, you didn't see. <clears throat> I did. Uh, re we did remove the engine. Um, we did that video that it was a complete failure because I don't know five minutes into the um, taking off the engine, the camera died. So and I didn't pay attention. I was just focused on removing the engine. So we did took it to uh, the person that is going to rebuild it. Um, it's gonna get a tr the best of the best, basically. That engine is gonna get it. We're gonna try to keep it the original 12A. Um, we're gonna do it out and I'll walk you through the engine build later on so um, last video you saw that I removed the um, or we started we got we started restoring the vehicle I removed the um, gas tank okay that was a big ordeal because I thought the uh, gas tank was um, fully um, empty <clears throat> it comes out it take you know it comes to be that that thing had easily um you know five pounds of debris rust and all that i thought i could um restore that in that, that uh that fuel tank come to be you know it wasn't even worth it so we actually in the same trip that we went to take the engine all the way to dallas texas to get restored um we found a guy that was selling a actually a brand new gas tank um, it was put on the vehicle and all that but when we took it down it came it comes out that this thing was brand spanking new and uh, <clears throat> you know I have it right here I'll show you later on um, a couple of uh, pictures of how the gas that you know the quality of the gas tank that we got um, the condition sorry of the gas tank that we that we got fortunately he was only he only wanted to sell the gas tank i couldn't get a, a fuel pickup oh, i couldn't get a um, fuel sensor i couldn't get any of that so we had to look for one <clears throat> um, it was a big issue to find one uh, we couldn't find a fuel pickup so i decided um, as you know i am a big uh, race car fanatic i've built uh, plenty of you know strip uh, street and strip uh, cars and whatsoever so what I decided to do was fully rebuild since the you know let me let me start first one of the biggest issues with the FB's SA's and FB's is that the fuel pickup the fuel lines and all that they're to the diameter it's uh, too small so Anyways, we were gonna upgrade all of the fuel lines. Might as well uh, upgrade of the fuel pickup and make it to if I decide in the near future turbocharge the vehicle or do whatever I need to do. Um, the fuel pickup didn't have to, you know, I didn't have to do anything uh, to it. So let me walk you through what we, you know, the steps that we took. First things first, um, the fuel pickup. And here's a picture of how the fuel pickup looked. Um, so the fuel pickup had tons of um, rust on it. What we did is we actually dipped the fuel pickup for two days on this product. I swear by this product. Um, I use it. I even dipped my engine blocks in it. This thing is called Evaporust. Um, you could actually, this is a small bottle, um, I'm, I'm just using this one because uh, I needed a little extra and it wasn't, uh, I didn't have enough time with this whole COVID situation, I didn't have enough uh, um, time to actually go and buy a, a five gallon uh, bucket. Um, they do come on the five gallon bucket, this, you could actually get an Harbor Freight, uh, I think this is like seven or eight dollars in a Harbor Freight, no. I think this is like $20 in Harbor Freight. You could actually get a five gallon pail, a five gallon bucket 
uh, Northern Tools or you could order it online, but if you do it in with Northern Tools, they'll ship it to the store for free and you could just pick it up and it's like $68 if you remember or something like that. So it works wonders. Like I said, you've seen the picture. Let me show it again of how this looked uh, before. And this is how it looks after two days of, uh, uh, no, not two days, like 24 hours of being dipped in it, uh, in the, in the evapo rust. I have someone around here. So this went from this to this. Of course, you know, it's not this, it has holes here you know the rust ate it away and all that so it's not usable so this is what we're gonna do I'm gonna create with this a you know a race car uh, type pickup and I use this um, whenever I'm running like nitrous systems and stuff like that this is the the same setup I use on a uh, street uh, street and strip a uh, vehicle <clears throat> if I don't want to do you know a fuel cell or have to weld um, an fittings on the bottom of the sump pit basically um, on the bottom of the uh, gas tank okay so what we do and let me let me tell you very simple um, cost effective because actually I tried sourcing one of these um, apex rotary um, they don't have it racing B doesn't have it um, I tried Pep Boys home, um, Pep Boys, <clears throat> also, you know, any, any other uh, O'Reilly's, and they don't have it. Um, so I tried a couple of aftermarket places that sell rotary parts, and they were wanting about $150 for one of these, which uh, it, I call Master Tricks, um, you know. So they wanted like $150 for one of these. And still, even if you uh, were to find one, you're still gonna run the issue that you're gonna be running six uh, minus six a.m. lines or minus eight a.m. lines, and the pickup is not gonna be enough. Okay, so what I did is, and this is a method. Like I said, I've used this in plenty of cars. Never used it in a rotary, but you know, it's not. It, it's gonna work perfect this is a, an idea for you guys to um, that are building rotary engines don't want to go with a fuel cell but want to not have to face uh, fuel starvation issues this is a good idea so this is this is two different host kits um, they're made they're made by a company called Yaz Y-A-Z uh, fuel cells okay I got these uh, I actually you could get these from Summit Racing I actually got these directly from uh, Yas simply because um, Summit had this one Summit had the minus six they didn't have the minus eight um, some people will say minus eight is an overkill but it's a fuel pickup you know there's no going wrong with uh, you know fuel you're gonna regulate it anyway at the carburetor or you're gonna regulate it anyway at the fuel pump or the fuel regulator so put all the fuel you can on it okay so this works very simple disclaimer make sure remember this is gonna go the way we're gonna build this is these are gonna go directly into the fuel tank make sure these hoses are made to be to go inside of the of the fuel tank okay reason why is you put a regular hose a braided hose and all that the fuel the constant fuel is going to eat away the braid is going to eat away the you know it's going to make the rubber uh, flimsy and it's going to start deteriorating and it's going to get it and your fuel lines, your fuel filter, uh, you name it, that's a recipe, you know, for, for failure. Okay, so you're gonna need your grinder, you're gonna need a fuel, uh, fuel bit, uh, uh, drill bit, and you're gonna need your, your drill. 
It's very simple. Remember, if you're going to use minus 6, minus 6 is equivalent to, is equivalent to 3 eighths. Um, and minus 8 is equivalent to half an inch. So just rule of thumb before you're going to do anything. Make sure you know you know what the diameter of the plug that you're going to put to the drill bit. You don't want to over drill and then have um, leakage. Okay, you want it as tight as you as you can. So first things first, let me put all this away right now, real quick. If you look back here, I do have the rear end for the FB. Um, this is a GSL rear end, so. The FB that I'm that uh, that I we're rebuilding, it's uh, GS, so it does it has drums on the back. So we're gonna do a conversion. There's gonna be videos on that too. Um, I have it here because I'm gonna start rebuilding it. I want to rebuild it before I put it in, just because um, you know I want to be as safe as possible. And remember, this also might be a giveaway car, so I want top quality uh, products going out there. So first things first. Um, let me find some, uh, let me find some uh, eye protection real quick. Okay, so I don't know if you noticed the layout of the garage is a little bit different now. Um, Have we moved all this? I can't find half of my stuff, so bear with me. Uh, eye protection is going to be a pair of sunglasses. Um, so first things first, we're going to cut away. Um, We are going to cut away the feed tubes and a lot of you guys are going to say these are those are perfectly fine why don't you just put uh, piping over them or whatever it's just a matter of uh, you know quality fuel pressure and quantity of fuel and all that uh, you know back in 1985 or back in the early 80s late 70s um, these 12 A's were having lots of issues with uh, fuel starvation. There's, you know, once you did header upgrade, int you know, intake, exhaust, um, so on and so forth, you were going to be running uh, lean and you don't, you, you know, you just don't, don't want that. So, we're just going to cut these real quick. Mind you, sorry about that, uh, mind you, we are only going to cut, we're only going to cut the return, which is the thinner one. And we're going to only, uh, the other one that we're going to cut is the um, feed. The vent we're going to leave by itself because the tube is fairly clean, it's nice, it's uh, neat. I'll, I'll probably, you know, grind it a little bit, but we are going to use the factory, uh, bleed the factory um, a system because remember the vehicle on the bottom is going to have the turnover control so we could leave that one and use the factory one we're only going to cut like I said the return and the feed so very simple let me get this all this set up So after you cut this, you know, you just, you're going to drill them anyways, but just clean them out a little bit. Just make sure, that, you know, everything, you don't get any extra debris and all that. So I'm just going to clean it out a little bit. Now make sure you've degreased this, um, you've degreased the filler uh, cap, because remember, this will create spark and it's spark with a uh, gas that's, you know.
So basically, that's that. Um, purists will say again, you you've uh, damaged a fairly, you know, replaceable um, fuel pickup. I really don't do you know don't care much for it because as as original as we're gonna keep the car, um, we're gonna keep keep the cover original. So that's that's all we need. So next step will be um, get the three eight your three eight drill bit, which is gonna be the for the minus side. And let me get a piece of uh, plywood so I could drill over So again, the return is gonna be a 3.8 drill bit. And make sure, you know, you do wanna keep the same, um, you know, the same locations for the, for the line feet lines. Okay, so um, that took a little bit longer than what I expected simply because my drill um, ran out of battery and my second battery I have forgotten to charge. Um, but I stopped a little bit while I charged my batteries. <clears throat> um, this is how the piece should look. Okay, so that's how the piece should look basically at 6 a.m. and at 8 a.m. Um, what I'm going to do now, next step, is uh, I'm going to clean the part a little bit with the brush. The brush just to take the, you know, excess, excess metal, um, you know. Excess gas, uh, gasket material and all that stuff. as clean as possible. Make it nice and clean. Um, so, after that, um, all you're going to do is now you know make sure all of your uh, holes are nice and round. The kit already comes. Everything you need comes with the kit. Um, so basically, all you gotta do is insert um, what's going to be what's going to be the uh, pickup. The, the fuel center, just uh, put it like this. Basically, you have the A and N, A, the, the minus eight um, port. You have a little gasket. And then you have a top gasket and a nut. Okay, so it should look something like uh, that. And then the minus six is the same exact concept. You know, make sure everything is nice and clean. Same thing with the uh, minus six and I just, I put this one backwards. Sorry about that. It's kind of late, so I'm trying to rush a little bit through this video. 
So basically, that's what it should look. Okay, make sure it goes all the way down so you have complete seal. Hand tight these uh, before you're gonna install them. Just uh, you know, just use a a ratchet or something to to tighten it a little bit. You don't have to go all crazy. Remember, these are plastic, so they will crack if you uh, over tighten them. Same thing on this side. Now on this one, something you gotta make sure is the nuts. I uh. This one worked out perfectly, but I have case, I've had had cases in which they're too close to each other, so you are not gonna be able to, um, you're not gonna be able to actually put them in the exact spots. I just drill, whenever that happens, I'll just drill a little bit to the side and try to make the hole as parallel as possible. And after that, you know, you'll put this, just like that. This one for the return. And it should look something like this. This is a, the whole part that I'm gonna use on the vehicle. Now this is gonna give me, the way I did it, this is gonna give me um, capabilities of if I wanted to go you know figure I'm running about 650 on my um, drag racing car and I'm using minus eight minus six actually feet this is a minus eight um, so different different type of vehicle um, these consume you know rotaries consume a lot more gas so I decided to go minus eight Realistically, I don't think it's necessary, but it gives me all the capabilities. I will never have to change this again. Now, let me uh, show you something else that I bought for this. So, just so you know, you make this this the fuel filter, fuel pickup filter. Um, the fuel pickup sock, whatever you want to call it. Um, these come, uh, they, I bought these uh, from Summit Racing. Um, they come in a minus six, minus eight, minus 10. Basically, these, you're gonna, uh, we're gonna cut to size, you know, whatever. Once we put them in the fuel, uh, in the, in the fuel uh, tank, we're going to cut them to size, but basically, Here's your fuel sock. I'm not gonna put it completely because I don't wanna, you know, have it. So basically, this is going to be your the fuel system, the fuel pickup system for the um, FB. Um, just to give you a little price, um, how much this costs to make. Let me get my receipt here. So here's my receipt. This is total cost on this. Basically, uh, the 6AN kit, 6AN <clears throat> kit was um, $18 from, from uh, like I said, from uh, Yaz uh, fuel cells. And the uh, 8AN was $32, okay, the sock, the sock, it was $12 from Summit Racing. So 3216, that's um 48. So figure $60 to make this whole piece. Of course, I already had this. Gauge that you have a drill bit, drill, and a, a brush. It should be a lot less money than buying an original one and um a lot more efficient so guys remember just a quick tip remember always use um, hoses that are meant to go in a fuel cell um, try the Yas kit it's uh, Yas uh, you can find them in summit like I said Yas uh, 
fuel cells has them. Um, the two, two kits, two holes, you know, cleaning and all that, and cutting all of the uh, excess excess uh, piping. But this is enough for a thousand horsepower on these vehicles. Okay. Any questions? Feel free to reach out. If you like what you see, guys, please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe, Man Media TV in YouTube, Man Media TV in Instagram. We're doing um, a lot of pictures. We have a marketing person that is starting to do a lot more stuff for you guys. So once again, Man Media TV in YouTube, Man Media TV in Instagram. Please subscribe. Give us a thumbs up and follow the build. Remember, somebody um, is gonna end up with this car. Um, my media TV, YouTube, my media TV, Instagram. Thank you guys and good night.